Reductionism, how to understand everything. On the last video, I said that we should seriously consider questioning everything, but how the hell do we do that, right? Since everything is too big, we need a way to begin. And my suggestion is that we start with the things that are most glaring to us, the things that are most impactful and apparent in our lives. Now, once there, the best or at least the most widely used method human beings have ever come up with for questioning everything is something called methodological reductionism. Now, using reductionism only means that we take a thing and we reduce it layer by layer until we arrive at its deepest, most essential layer. Now, the thought process with reductionism goes like this. If we want to understand a thing, what it is and how it works, we need to understand what it's composed of. We need to understand what's inside. If we want to understand a thing, especially something we want to control or use, one of the best ways to go about it is to reduce that thing to its constituent components. Whether it be a life or a complex system like a financial market or a complex object like a car or a computer, we can arrive at a better understanding of the whole by first understanding the things composing the whole. That's how we've gotten to our current understanding of our world in scientific terms anyway. Biology reduced a human being to organs, organs to tissues, tissues to cells, and physics reduced everything inorganic to molecules, atoms, subatomic particles, and fields of energy. I like reductionism. I really do. But I do have a problem when people don't acknowledge its limitations, and not just in physical terms of the known physical limitations like plank time and plank length, but also in the apparent inability to reduce and experience a life and a human being to a collection of functioning parts. Clearly, we are composed of physically distinct structures. We have a physically distinct body and systems, but in terms of our experience of our lives, it's a unified whole. Treating us as anything less will lead to suffering, great suffering in my opinion. You aren't your environment, your community, your mind, your consciousness, or your body. You are all of it working together. We don't have a sex life. We don't have a work life. We don't have a social life. We simply have a life. You don't have components to your existence. Compartmentalization is a fantasy. Everything affects everything. Yes, it's helpful to direct our energies to improve in one region of our life at a time, but every region is touching, if only loosely. The reductionist approach alone isn't enough to achieve existential homeostasis, you know, that place where we're good inside and our world is good outside because a human being is a process. We're an ongoing happening, we're dynamic, and there will always be something fluxing and flowing in and around us. Hopefully, anyway. If not, we're dead, right? What we're trying to do when we break a thing down, though, is to gain control over it, to get a handle on it, usually for the sake of predicting what may come or so that we can get this thing to do something that we want it to do. Now, dynamic things like a weather system and a life don't lend themselves well to this type of thinking because they're never still long enough for us to get a full account of all their components. Even if they were to slow down long enough, there are way too many components and moving parts for us to fully account for. What a good life is and what we need to live well may not be the same as it was last month since us and our environment are continually evolving. In the end, when we want to get a handle on things, I can think of no better way for the way most of us view the world than to use reductionism. But to use it effectively, I think we must always remember to work back to a solid and uniform picture of the thing as we experience it. It does us no good getting lost in the details where we understand everything there is to know about the thing except for what it is and how to use it. If we were new here on Earth, right, and we were attempting to employ reductionism, a car could be interpreted as anything from a weapon to a movable shelter. But until we understand people and roads and things like this, we'll likely always miss the point in the intended use of a car. I think you can tell a lot about a person's worldview by how they feel about reductionism. Do you find the notion of reducing life and experience to unfeeling parts insensitive and ignorant? Or do you think it's the way to go and anyone hoping for some universal seamlessness is being silly and irrational? Let me know what side of the line you stand on reductionism. Now, personally, I have a foot in both camps. I think reductionism is highly effective and highly useful, but I think ultimately it would be proven to be an incorrect and insufficient approach. We just have to be careful to check ourselves and not jump to conclusions. Everyone wants to be there already. It's natural. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you already haven't done so, and I'll see you on the next one.